but I understand you in the United States. Um, I've just seen some headlines on Twitter or something. I don't really understand it. So maybe you can explain it to me. There's some sort of religious sacrament that's taking place in your country in a couple of days where people are going to go into some sort of booth and tick some sort of box and some deity is going to decide how the country will be run for the next four yeah, years? Yeah, it's this this strange cult ritual and uh, it, it the people involved seem to think it's not strange because they see everybody else involved, so they don't see it very objectively. Yeah, they basically go in, into this special building and go hide in a booth and do, I don't know what, incantations or things they do, and then they press a button and decide... Um, which deity, which they don't look like deities. They look like people. In fact, they don't look like nice people. Um, but I have it on good authority, if there is such a thing, uh, that these are deities, and they get to choose one to rule the world for uh, four years, and that that counts as being free. That's good enough. Right. Close enough to being free is to choose between two psychotic sociopaths um, to violently dominate everyone, and everybody's all excited. Now, now, come, come on, Larkin. They don't rule the world. They are the leaders of the free world. Get it straight. Um, yes, indeed. And this is an interesting sacrament, or whatever you want to call it. And be careful, everyone out there. If you take a selfie of your ballot after you've filled in the appropriate box, apparently you might be arrested, depending on what state you're in. So, you know, you got to be careful. The the gods have put a lot of rules in place for this particular sacrament, and it's to be taken very seriously. All right, um, clearly you and I are on the same side of this conversation, but I am going to do my honest level best to put on the devil's advocate cap and actually attempt to put, a, I, I think, a, a, a real argument in place against our flippant dismissal of election and voting. Selection, as I like to say, because it's, you know, but anyway, um, and, and I think there is a legitimate concern that people out there have when they hear people saying don't vote. Um, the, the, the concern is if candidate A embodies a set of policies we'll call policy package A, candidate B embodies a set of policy that we'll call policy package B, if you truly believe, whether or not that belief is true and justified, but if you truly believe policy package A will result in better material conditions for you and your family, at least over the next four years, then isn't that an argument to do at least that in the meantime, while you're working on other ways of trying to free yourself? No, and here's why not. Let's say policy, you know, collection of policies B is the one that somebody thinks is preferable. And A is the, oh, just intolerable and unspeakable. In that mindset, all the tyrants have to do to get people to vote for A, the worse one, is to make an even worse one. So that between the two, they vote for the worse one. I mean, the, the, the less bad one in their view. But in principle, that means they can trick you into advocating complete totalitarianism as long as they can offer another choice that's even slightly worse. And if you look at American politics, that's what it's been for 200 years. It's almost always, you know, that people complain about negative campaigning. Well, what else is there? All there is is your guy is even worse than my guy. And the reason it's such a, uh, a brilliant trick, well, it's not even brilliant. It's sad that people still fall for it. Uh, I used to use as a sort of extreme example, like... Uh, if they had Stalin running versus Hitler, would you still vote? Would you still think it's legitimate? Would you still go, well, we definitely got to keep that out of power? Well, that stopped being a hypothetical when the candidates ended up being Hillary Stalin and Trump Hitler. The, it really he will defend his police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get to take the law. We enforce it. But at the end of the day, each and every man is to go home safe. Sometimes the use of force 
is necessary, you need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan liberty for all. I'm your host, Dave Bourne. And it is November 17th, 2016, and we are coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you for tuning in to Nonpartisan Liberty for All. We're on weeknights, Tuesday through Thursday at 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern on the Nonpartisan Liberty for All media and radio network, which now runs 24-7, so you can tune into it anytime uh, on the live stream, which you can catch on Spreaker.com and NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com and to the archives immediately following the show on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. On Nonpartisan Liberty for All, we promote self-ownership and the ideas of true freedom and liberty, meaning being able to do whatever you want as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom. Exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence. And of course, it does a lot more. That's just a summary a very small uh summary to kind of summarize my views and the views of the show we of course are always happy to hear from you you can reach us via phone at 702-470-7664 that's 702-470-7664 or via skype Username nonpartisan liberty for all. Just send us a con a contact request and what you want to talk about your name and where you're uh, skyping us from. That sounds painful. Getting skyped, um, and you can check us out at nonpartisanlibertyforall dot com, which has the links to all our social media, Facebook, uh, also uh, original articles as well as blogs, or I call them blogs slash articles, and a bunch of other stuff. So please check us out there at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. So tonight, we're finally going to talk about the election, not something that I really have talked much about in general, or I think I did one or two shows. One of them was because of the person that was co-hosting with with me at that time uh, for that show wanted to actually talk about uh, the election, but we talked about it in a different way. Uh, and then I brought up Trump a long time ago just to talk about what a douchebag he is. Uh, and that was before he even got the nomination. Which I haven't changed my opinion, of course, just because somebody uh, got elected. But the reason, I mean, partially is uh, not why he's a douchebag. We'll get into that. But because uh, the reason why I pretty much avoided the a, a lot of talk about the election is because that's all everybody else talked about. You know, there's all these things going on and everybody's just talking about every aspect they possibly can of an election and of an election of two people, first of all, that according to polls, nobody liked either of them. And the only reason that I brought that up because I got criticized by somebody for bringing that up, um, you know, about, well, Trump had, I think it was somebody that was defending Trump and how many people came to his rallies. First of all, I did a show about perspective, and we'll talk a little about that today because it's all about um, elections are all about perspective as well because you have a certain amount of people in the country or a certain amount of eligible voters, and then you have, you know, how many votes the actual candidate that wins gets. So like when Obama was president, 
you know, and and he even said this with Trump, you know, this people have spoken and whatever, and, and which is a bunch of bullshit because the majority of people do not vote for the winning candidate because, I mean, in this election, they actually didn't. Um, but, I mean, the majority of people in the country don't vote for the winning candidate because most of them don't vote. Um, now... Obama actually gave a percentage of, uh, he said 43% of eligible voters didn't vote. Now, I believe it's higher than that, actually, because it came out to about $120 million And I don't know, well, you would think he'd have the correct stats, so... I guess, you know, if he's making a speech and, and giving that number that he's correct however there are people that can't vote because they've been convicted of a of a felony um and for other reasons i I mean that's the main reason i can think of but anyway um you have to put things like that in perspective so we'll talk about that but uh, what i was saying about uh trump was that somebody tried to say you know well 10,000 people went to his rally so that poll doesn't or not 10,000 but the tens of thousands of people that are going to his rallies and I'm like yeah but there's 321 million people in the country or something like that 320 million you know uh, around that amount of of people in the country so that really doesn't mean shit but the reason why I referred to that poll was to back up and not just that alone along with a bunch of other stuff is my whole point that it doesn't matter what people want they don't have a say in the government one of the things that trump was right about yeah it is rigged now he said it as a personal thing like it's rigged against him but no it's rigged in the sense of and not even in the the votes although i believe that if the powers that be had to rig an election vote wise they would but it's rigged in so many ways and i don't know if uh, people turned in early uh, tuned in early enough uh, if you're listening live um if you're listening to the archive then you would have heard it to hear uh an excerpt from Larkin Rose's interview that he did I think about a week before the election um talking about you know this lesser of two evil bullshit and you know if if you were voting between Stalin and Hitler I mean would you actually vote for one of those candidates I think to vote for somebody out of the lesser to evil philosophy is ridiculous. And what uh, another thing that I'm going to talk about and that I believe as well, and that this poll helps support it at the same time, um, but I don't need a poll to fucking support it. It's just uh, there's there's so many other uh, things that you can point to. But, you know, you look at what happened with Bush and Obama. You just look at the Obama presidency in itself. Um, Things like that. But it shows that you don't have control over... It's just another example of you don't have control over the candidates you vote for. They're presented to you. Now, if you're not part of one of these fucking parties, then you really don't. Um, You don't either way, but... You have the Democrat and the Republican just presented in front of you and vote for one of these people. Why? Why would I vote for one of those people? And first of all, I don't approve of people ruling over me or of this government or of any government for that matter. So I don't approve of a ruler Now, what is somebody who runs for office, really what somebody that runs for any office is, is someone that's telling you that they know what's better for you than you do, at least in some aspect. Now, it depends on what office they're running for. You know, somebody could be running for school board 
Uh, and they're they're saying when they're running for school board that they have some kind of plan that they know what's better for the the schools than you do. Now that's an example of something that you know. In that example, maybe they actually do, but it doesn't matter. But when it comes to higher offices, obviously, where you're talking about um, the state legislature or here in Las Vegas, we have the county commission. Um, a lot of counties have county commissions or your uh, representatives in Congress or president, which we'll be talking about tonight. So obviously these people are sitting there saying I have the best. I mean, they don't come out and say it in those words, but they do come out and say it. They have a plan. They have an agenda. They have things they want to do. And these things that they want to do are going to affect your life. So what they're saying is, is that I know what's better, especially when it comes to an office like president or senator or, you know, uh, Congress, they're saying that they know what's better for you and your life and how to make your life better. And they can do a better job at it than you can. So you need them to rule over you, which is a bunch of bullshit. Not only that, and I'm not one of those people that down or fault people that vote. If you voted um, for president and, or any of the things, um, I'm not somebody to say, well, you shouldn't have voted. However, if you voted for Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, I think a little differently, um, because people could have voted for the third party candidates if you really feel strongly about voting. And one of the things I had brought up was voting on the questions, which I think are rigged as well, to be honest. But um, they're rigged the same, same way. I mean, there was so much money. We had a question here in Nevada whether to do background checks on all guns now. And the money that came in from out of state from Bloomberg was, I think Bloomberg himself, his organization was 14 million right there. They ended up with 19 million versus 6 million on the other side. And it's still, even with all that money, I think it was 50.45 to 49 point whatever the difference would be, 5-5. I mean, it was so fucking close that, um, you know, it it barely passed because this is Nevada. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying, how the fuck does something like that pass in Nevada? And I'm sure a lot of people like me just didn't vote um, where for that question, you know, I could have went in and left everything blank and voted on that. And we had a another question to legal legalize cannabis and I should have voted on that, but that passed. So that was fine. But it is rigged in that sense because you have in every state, whatever the election is, you have money coming in unless maybe it's a little very local town election or something like that. Even with you know, I mentioned county commission. I mean, those are rigged as well. And what I mean is, you know, money, political parties, all of that. You look at pre- the presidential race. First of all, on one side, you basically had two people to choose from if you're a Democrat to vote for. And then on the other side, you had a bunch of people. But still, it, it doesn't mean you like any of those people. And these are the people that are able to run. It's not like anybody can just run for president and have any type of chance. Plus you have to join the party and you have to be supported by the party and the party can pick whoever they want. And they, they actually have the right to do that. Like the libertarian party has a whole different nomination process. And that's the whole uh, point of a party that, 
they don't have to have the people vote in their candidate to represent a party. The issue, though, is that money, federal money, which is taxpayer money, obviously, goes to these parties, and it shouldn't. And I have an issue with that because depending on the state, you know, I can't vote in the not that I care because I wouldn't anyway, but I can't vote in these primaries. So pretty much you get as as Larkin Rose was saying, you get, you know, one person. And it's always the lesser of two evils, I think, in this election was probably the closest to just pure evils that you're going to get. But either way, why are you going to vote for evil? If you're going to vote for anybody, vote for the third party. And what that does, if the Libertarian Party would have got 5% of the vote, they would have been able to been on the ballot in every state and participate in the debates. So you have a monopoly, really, you know, a biopoly, I guess. But the Republicans and Democrats want to, you know, they're on the same side. They want more government and they only want their, their two parties to control everything and their two parties to exist. And they'll do whatever they can to keep it that way. So that's their ruling structure, and it will stay that way um, for the most part, I I think, unless even if, you know, a third party got into the debates, um, it's still, you know, with the money and the uh, – it's like a name brand. I mean – The majority of this country, I do not believe, is part of one of these parties. Now, they might be a registered Democrat, a registered Republican, because they feel like they have no option. And people convince you, oh, if you vote for somebody else, you're throwing your vote away. How are you throwing your vote away? If you're in a, there are 120 million people that voted. So how much do you think your one little vote counts, first of all? I know you have the Electoral College, so... It depends on how many people in your state. But, I mean, even if you take the smallest state, which I think population-wise would be Rhode Island, um, either that or Hawaii, but I think it's Rhode Island. But anyway, it's it's still millions of people. Um, So it's just all bullshit. It's an illusion to give you – they want to give you an illusion of a choice. And I believe the candidates have been pre-selected and well, the candidates have, but I mean, the winner has been pre-selected and that it, you know, by having Trump actually win, there's a benefit to that in that it will make some people that maybe thought things were rigged like, oh, maybe they're not. And you know, things are going to change. And you you have people that have been saying the same fucking thing for 50 years or longer, you know, if they're older, that, oh, if we just get the right people in. now, And I have clips of fucking people that all they've done is criticize government and talk about how bad it is. And they're sitting there like Alex Jones is sitting there, you know, thinking that, the world has been saved. I mean, this is, things are so fucked up, man. It's just, it's surreal to me. You know, Trump is a fucking clown. Hillary is, uh, you know, one of the biggest criminals that probably has ever been, ran for president and there's been a I mean a lot of them um a lot of people don't know about what went on in Mena Arkansas during Iran Contra supposedly her law firm uh may have been involved in laundering money and shit like that at worst case uh or best case for her I guess she knew what was going on she knows how corrupt uh Bill Clinton was and it, it all the other shit that she did with orchestrating stuff in the state department with Libya and moving weapons from Benghazi 
and Syria and all of that shit. And it's just... And it doesn't really matter. The point is that it doesn't matter who the fucking president is. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me. Oh, Trump, Trump's in there. So now it's the end of the fucking world. No, it's not. And we'll go through why. Basically, it didn't matter who got elected. Number one, whoever got elected, the powers that be wanted them to get elected. They narrowed it down to those two candidates. They, No matter how it seemed, those are the two candidates they wanted. And that's who they wanted to get elected. Now, I don't know why. And I don't know. Well, I mean, I have a theory. But obviously, I don't know the details. I don't know if it was a more of a last minute thing, you know, thinking about, OK, because if you look at it, how things run in cycles where they a lot of times it switches from Republican to Democrat just because people think like when Obama came uh, into the scene, I guess, and talking about hope and change, and you had eight years of Bush who just destroyed the fucking housing market. I mean, he didn't destroy the housing market single-handedly, but the housing market had just been destroyed. He went into, uh, invaded a bunch of countries uh, for really no reason, you know, all of these things. And then Obama comes along with hope and change, and and what did you get? You got the same of Bush. You got more spying, more free when it comes to at least freedom. So where I see it it being the same is there's an agenda of what I call the powers that be. So I refer to the powers that be as uh, a number of people and organizations. So you have the corporations you have billionaires that you probably don't even know their name and neither do I. And you have the groups like the council on foreign relations, uh, trilateral commission, Bilderberg group groups that get together in secret. Well, I don't know that the CFR really gets together in secret, but groups that get together that are involved in government are made up of some of the people that make them up are former uh, elected officials and talk about policy and government and things like that when they're not part of the government. So they're part of dictating policy. So I use the word the powers that be because to go through all of that every time would be... uh, you know, kind of a waste of time that, oh, well, I think it's made up of this, this, and this. And I, I say it sometimes just because obviously there are people that don't listen to every show or maybe never heard me before or whatever. But even just saying the powers that be, you know, use your imagination um, as well. If, you know, I don't actually go into what I believe that to be, or you can always send me an email and ask me a question, but But yeah, I mean, those are the people that some people call them the shadow government, whatever. And the CIA being part of that as well, because they pretty much operate in secret and do whatever they want because they're able to fund themselves through things like drugs, which is probably another reason why drugs are still illegal, because it makes no sense for them to be illegal. I mean, everything points to things being better for people if drugs were legal and i mean all drugs not to mention the fact that regardless of all that that's not why i believe they should be legal i believe in a concept called self-ownership that you own yourself now government believes they own you and they have shown that in their actions drugs being illegal being one of them So, uh, essentially, I believe that this election was rigged for Trump, and it was rigged in 
you have gov- in every election is the same way. It's all the same shit. It doesn't matter who gets elected. You know, last one was for Obama, the fucking then before, you know, you had Bush. But it was you have government media, you have money, and don't underestimate money because with money you can uh not only buy well, you really don't have to buy the government media. I think they're pretty much controlled already. They're they're already bought. So I don't think that the candidate has to really buy them uh, to slant stories. But for advertising, commercials, I mean, there were commercials all over the place, of course. You have billboards, all that shit, um, and just getting their name out there. I mean, money is very important and that along with the media being rigged. Well, people will say, well, but it was rigged against Trump and every story about Trump was bad, but that's reading into what people want. I mean, it's looking at it and seeing, okay, Obama ended up being the same as Bush. We're sick of, The majority of people, and this is why I believe Trump won, regardless of nothing him saying having to do anything with uh, freedom or any of his policies being remotely (laughs) um, good. But I guess, you know, everybody has something that's good somewhere whatever or some good ideas or you know a clock is right twice a day a broken clock um so but that in planning to get trump elected it's like feeding off of that underdog type of not really underdog but that anti what they looked at him as anti-establishment not uh, from Washington, you know, not a politician. I mean, in a way, he's worse. He's a businessman. And you look at how many times he changed his mind on shit and said one thing, then another. He used to be a Democrat. But even in in the throughout the election and even how he's uh, changing things now, and we'll get into that. So... I think that for the country and for all of these people that were getting fed up with the establishment, that it's a benefit in a way, the illusion of him getting elected. Because there's an illusion of him being some... I don't know why people even think this. I am just, I'm fucking dumbfounded, to be honest. Some of the shit that I've heard uh, self-proclaimed anarchists even say about Trump, because they're not anarchists, they're full of shit. And I mean real anarchists, not this whole, uh, I'll get into this when I get into the protesters, but they're calling the protesters anarchists. Anarchy does not mean total chaos go and start fucking riots okay that's not what it means and we'll get into that um later but that it would be more beneficial to push the agenda so i look at it i look at it this way now there might be little things here or there that are different between candidates there's always going to be that in between the parties but they're not really important things in the big scheme of the powers that be, even though the powers that be don't agree on everything neither. But I think one thing they agree on is the purpose of government. So let me get, take a step back here and explain my view on government in general, which I've talked about before but then it will make it easier to understand when I get into all this detail. And I'll probably go a little late tonight, especially that it's Thursday and one more day of work and the week's over. Yay. And then it fucking starts all over again um, on Monday. 
But that's another uh, thing we need to uh, do a show on because all these regulations really are... If people don't understand, they, they, they support more government. And, and we could talk about, we will talk about the protesters and how they're hypocrites in my, in my book, even though I can't stand Trump, but I, I can get into why they're, they're hypocrites. But the more regulations you have, they don't understand that more people could start their own fucking businesses. There's something called barrier to entry. I've mentioned this word a million times or barriers to entry. So each industry has barriers to entry. It might be you need at least a certain amount of money or you need a certain amount of experience. Or now because of the internet, really anybody can start a business. Now it might not be, you know, it depends on the business uh, the barriers to entry. Um, but to at least get into it, there's barely any now to be successful. is a whole nother story. Anybody can start an online business, but you know, the problem is starting a success, successful online business. Now for all these other businesses, there are literal barriers to entry called regulations that you have to go through and get this permit and do this and do that and all of these things and get this approved and do this paperwork. And then after you do that and you need all this money to do it, you know, you got to compete with, say, if you're talking department stores with a corporation like Walmart that benefits from governments, not just the federal, but local governments where there are examples of, well, Walmart came to town, so we gave them you know, we built a road for them. We gave them the five years, no taxes, you know, all of this shit or these benefits that they give um, to these big corporations. And a corporation is a government created entity. People don't realize they talk about capitalism. I, I talk about free markets. I don't I wouldn't even call it the same thing anymore. Because by definition, capitalism, it sort of means free markets. But either way, what we have now is not capitalism. The United States has never had capitalism. Neither has anybody. Um, They've had a form of it. But now it's corporatism. It's crony capitalism. It's all of that. But corporations are a government creation. Because... What a corporation is, is it gives you limited liability. And what that means is whatever money you put into the business, you know, you lose, but they can't come after you for your personal assets. That's a legal definition. So meaning that I start or you start your own fucking restaurant and you incorporate it. It doesn't have to be a corporation. It can be like an LLC or there's other, there are other business, uh, legal business entities, which is all government because it's laws that allow you to have limited liability. And the only liability you have is whatever you put into the company and your own money because, you know, you've basically given that to the company, right? Whatever you, you've put in, you can't get back. But, you know, you do that and say during that course of time, you make a couple million dollars. Say you're, you know, whatever, your business does great and you become a millionaire, which usually doesn't happen. But say you do, they can't come after you for that. They can't come after your personal assets if you go bankrupt. So if the company owes all this money, goes bankrupt, you're fine personally. Now your business is, you know, whatever. So you don't have to worry about shit. The other thing is the banking industry and how the government basically, well, the Fed, which is not government, but it is, but it's not. But it's a private private bank where the chair of the Fed is appointed by the president. But other than that, they can pretty much do whatever they want. But the government 
could get rid of the Fed, they don't have to have a uh, national bank or a government bank. And from that, all these corporations are able to benefit because they're able to give out money. They distribute money to all the banks. The banks are able to practice something called fractional reserve banking, which means, you know, if if the bank has a hundred dollars in savings, for example, they're able to lend out a thousand. But of course you're talking about, you know, millions and billions of dollars that they're able to, that they have access to and they just create it out of nowhere, just like the Fed creates it out of nowhere because money is backed by nothing. So I don't want to get too much into that, um, but that's a whole nother, you know, issue um, that causes people to support a certain form of government like socialism and, and not believe in free markets because they don't know the truth about them. But anyway, when we're talking about government in general and what I believe the powers that be want to do and what they want to do to every government and the purpose of government in the first place. First of all, the purpose of government is obviously to control people. I don't know that that's you can argue that point that that's pretty much a fact. Otherwise, why have a government? Well, the other What they say, what they tell you government is there for is to protect your rights. That's a bunch of bullshit. You look up any definition of government, control is in that definition. So this is more my opinion or theory or whatever you want to call it, but it's backed up by information, um at least information that doesn't say this is exactly how it is. Like there's some document that came from, you know, whatever, but it's backed up by information in that, you know, coming to a logical conclusion based on all of the stuff that has gone on throughout the years and whatever, it's a conclusion based on information. But it's still my conclusion and my opinion. So I don't want to sit here and say, well, this is a fact. I have to document from, you know, all these presidents that they're all it's a big conspiracy that this is what they're there to do. But I know that Jesse Ventura talked about when he was governor, how he was taken to it might have been the state legislature like some basement and talk to about stuff that he can't even talk about or whatever but um you also got the cia going on too and the president probably doesn't even know what the fuck the cia is doing they just operate and who knows how many uh you know the cia may even have their own divisions if you've ever seen the movie the men in black now that had to do with aliens and whatever but how they operated basically unknown and no one knew knew who they were. And who knows if there aren't government agencies that exist that are maybe maybe uh, extensions of the CIA, for example. And that wouldn't surprise me at all. Now, I don't know that. That's just... I'm not even saying that that's... That I think that. I'm saying it's a possibility. But... When I look at governments and their goal being to, their ultimate goal now initial, initially is to control things, but to a certain level, because nobody would sign on in the first place, basically, to start the government. Now, of course, none of us did. We were just born into it which is a whole nother thing that we may or may not get into. Um, But at some point the government was started. They actually technically overthrew the government and implemented the constitution a 
they had the Articles of Confederation. Supposedly, they claim that they followed, you know, whatever it said in the Articles of Confederation when it came to overthrowing govern- the government. Um, but the way they did it was se- kind of secretive, and certain people they didn't tell, and it, it wasn't done uh, in how it should have been. And it was to take more control because the Articles of Confederation the states had more power and when you look at that if a state has more power what it means is there are less people making decisions now i still think you still don't have any power i mean if you take a smaller country you take a country with two million people compared to like the united states which there should never be a country with this many people and i've said that so many times um because you have a federal government ruling over so many people that your vote means nothing. But even if it's 2 million people, yes, your vote means more because it's, say, all 2 million people vote, it's one two millionth compared to one uh, 120 millionth of the say, which, again, is getting into meaningless shit, but you still don't have say and you don't have rights because there's things that governments have no right to decide anyway. But getting back to my philosophy on governments, like, for example, what you put in your body, but they decide that anyway. But um, so, you know, they start off presenting to the people if you want to take the u.s government because that's really what we're talking about although this is the case with other governments but they're they just weren't as good of doing it because they're a lot of them were a lot older and they you know like if you cut if you come out and start a government and come out right away as a dictator and you tell the people that you're gonna just rule over them and torture them and whatever and violate their rights. Most of those people are going to say either I don't want to live in this place or, um, yeah, we're going to try to fight back first and see if we can, uh, never establish your government. (laughs) But if you come out and say, well, we're going to have all these protections and we're going to have checks and balances and we're going to have this piece of paper, magical piece of paper that protects all your rights. People are more apt to say, oh, yeah, OK, well, you're going to be there to just protect our rights. Now, what I believe was the goal from the beginning and has happened, because if you really look at it, and, I, and you know, there's certain people that I have respect for and I don't, I don't know what their real view is because it's hard to know, you know, things get passed down and there's different views of different people. Like Abraham Lincoln was presented like he was this great guy. If you really read into Lincoln and learn more things about him, you learn how he violated the Constitution. I don't know how many times and violated people's rights and did all these things that basically he didn't have the right to do. But and he he started an income tax, actually. Um, that was the first income tax was, I think, 1861. And it was for maybe 20 years or something. It, it didn't last that long because it was, I believe, because of the Civil War and more to support that. But he had no right to do that. Anyway, um, so that the government starts off and tells people, you know, that, but you have you put people in power so what you do is you give people power over you well none of us did because we weren't fucking alive but and even the people back then didn't the elite at the time 
because that's what it was. The rich landowners, the elite, and I'm not saying all of them were bad people. Like I said, some of them, like Jefferson and Washington, uh, I have respect for. And, you know, and I read some of Jefferson's stuff. But I don't know what was really going through their head. They could have wrote whatever they wanted and been thinking totally something else. And the majority of the people could have had that in mind. Look, we just want the rich white landowners to rule this. We're the elites and we want to rule over the rest of everybody else. That could have totally been what it was about. And I think to an extent that probably was what it was about. But you can't start off that way. So what I believe happened is, and the goal from the beginning was, and this is over generations, obviously, that you take away more freedoms, more rights, and I'm talking about negative rights, more controls. And I'll just give a quick definition of positive and negative rights for those people who don't um know the difference so it's easy to get confused so negative rights are rights like having the right to put what you want in your body um having the right to possess whatever you want having the right to self-defense having the right to own property basically things that don't involve other people um that's not the definition i would give it positive rights are are the rights that progressives now or socialists are trying to convince people these are what rights are. Like the right to force somebody to perform a procedure on you. Like free health care is not a right. The right to food. The right to a certain wage. These are not rights. You don't have a right to anything. And the only thing I said you kind of have a right to, although some people will even debate this, is that your parents, you know, when you're a baby and you can't take care of yourself, feed you and take care of you. Now, some people could logically or ethically even argue that at a certain age, a young age, that they don't have to be responsible for you anymore. But that's a whole nother issue. Um, so that's the difference between positive and negative rights. And positive rights are not rights. They're not freedoms. I, I heard somebody say, well, I have the right not to be killed. So that means or I have the right to live. So that means you don't have the right to own a gun. Which is such it's ludicrous, the statement itself. Because one, you're assuming that. OK. One of these people may kill you out of the millions, hundreds of millions. So because of that, you're saying they don't have the right to own a gun. It's just it it's a ridiculous thing. But people are being convinced that they have the rights to all these things. And you don't. You don't have the right to anything. You don't. And I mean that in the sense of nobody owes you anything. So, you know, there are certain rights that you have as a, I call them human rights, but then people get confused because they look at human rights as positive rights, but The right when just being a person, you know, you have the right of self-ownership and all those rights based off of self-ownership, like the right to self-defense, the right to own property. But that's not somebody giving you something. You're not entitled to somebody giving you something or getting things for free or anything like that. You are, as a human, as long as you don't hurt somebody else, um, kill, rape, steal, uh, anything like that, you have the right to do whatever you want. And those are the negative rights. But you're not 
owed anything by society. You're not owed money or food or medical care or anything like that. You're just not. You know, nobody owes you or you're not owed a job. That's life. That's how it is. But in being a human being, you have rights as a human being as long as you're not affecting other people's rights. Because what you're doing, if you believe in positive rights, you're forcing other people, you're violating other people's human rights or natural rights. Because if you force a doctor to do something or you force somebody to give you their money or you force somebody to give you food. Now, if they give it to you on their own voluntarily, that's fine. But to force somebody to do something for you, you have no right to do that. So going back to getting back to government. So essentially. Over generations, it's the end goal. It'd be easier to put it this way. The end goal is the government wants to control every aspect of your life and everything, not just your life, but they want to control everything, including every aspect of your life. That's the best way to put it. And possibly with the United States, the world. And maybe not the world run by the United States, but the world run by, you know, five major countries or something like that in a world government. But I think that's after the fact. And I'm not really concerned about other countries as far as I'm concerned about other countries. Like, I don't want to see people getting killed. And I hope they're in the best possible situations they can be in. Um, and their freedoms are not being violated. But what I'm saying is I'm not worried about other countries violating my freedoms because no other country has ever violated my freedom. And that's why I get to to say that the military somehow protects my freedom is is bullshit. And I'm not trying to offend anybody in the military, but I'm sorry, it's bullshit. Because Vietnam, Iraq, Iran, well, they didn't go in Iran, there's sanctions. But um, all of these covert ops going into other countries, drones, all of this shit that the military does is just following orders from politicians and essentially they're out there to carry out the agenda of politicians. They don't protect anybody's freedom. If you were protecting my freedoms, you'd be standing up to fucking police and the government, the U.S. government. Now, I don't need anybody to protect me personally, okay? I got enough... uh, (laughs) I have... uh, I'll call them machines, I guess. I I, I... I have my own means of protection. We'll just leave it at that. So I don't need the military to protect me. And if somebody attacked the U.S., we have enough guns as a nation, although I believe we should have access to whatever the police have access to because that would be the only way to actually have a check and balance on the government. And that's really what guns are about. And people don't understand that. And they're, not only that is they see three or four shootings on the news or something like that, and they think that happens every day. They don't put things in perspective, as I was talking about earlier. And we'll get to the whole perspective thing about the amount of people in the country and the percentage of things that happen and the amount of times or the amount of people that it actually affects in terms of the total population. Because you have to factor that in. Because if the United States was a country of a million people, all of these things wouldn't be happening. Or they'd be happening even less than they are. But government media 
you know, wants you to be scared. They want to program you, make you think you need government and all of this shit. And guns is the biggest thing because they know once they get guns from people, we're we're really fucked. I mean, we're pretty much fucked already. Um, but there are some things that we can do, like noncompliance and things like that. But so the end game, I believe, for government is taking con- control over every aspect of your life. And you look at what they're doing now. They're setting up the infrastructure to do that. You know, people look at spying like it's no big deal. Like, oh, who cares? I'm being spied on all my devices. The, the information's being collected. My camera, my computer might turn on and record me. Um, all of this shit. Nobody seems to give a fuck about the police are arming, you know, with automatic weapons and, you know, tanks and all of this shit. Nobody seen. Well, that I wouldn't say nobody seems to give a fuck, but uh, politicians don't seem to give a fuck. And if they do, they're just talking shit. They're not doing anything about it because that's part of their plan. They're putting in, in this infrastructure. So. At some point, they'll drop the illusion of... Because right now, it's an illusion of freedom. Some people actually believe that they have freedom, and it's still an illusion, and it's still a, you know, well, I'm living comfortable. I'm not saying me, but people have the attitude, I'm living comfortably enough where they haven't done enough yet for me to care. And I think that's the attitude of most people. But what keeps happening is... You have, whether you want to call it a shadow government or the powers that be, that they're moving in that direction. And every president keeps moving in that direction. And it just so happened that, you know, where Obama came in, you know, um, he came in when surveillance started to get more and more uh prevalent and and it's been going on for a long time but they've been getting more and more technology so if it would have been romney you would have had the same shit you know so bush just passed the baton to obama and obama's gonna pass the baton to trump and it's the same thing and what trump will do is the, the same shit is he will continue to and in a lot of the things he even says or has said uh, support this and his attitudes. Um, but we'll continue with that same shit. More surveillance. You know, he talks about terrorists and we need, you know, we need more military. We need uh, to respect the police. You know, these are all th- things that he has said. And he's going to go along with the same shit. Now, are there other things that he's going to do? that don't affect their whole, you know, agenda. Uh, Sure. And there's things that, you know, Obama has done, I'm sure, that have nothing to do with that agenda because you got to keep the illusion of freedom. So that's the whole thing. They still want to maintain the illusion of freedom. Eventually, and they're starting more and more not to give a fuck. And that's why, you know, people don't believe in a lot of people don't believe in false flags, although it's documented uh, ones that have happened or ones that they were planning on happening. Uh, Like uh, what was the one in Cuba? Operation. um, Fuck, I can't think of the name right now where they were going to conduct terrorist attacks and blame it on Cuba. And there this is all documented. So. It doesn't hurt them. It helps them. If you look at Sandy Hook, which I'm going to do a show on next week, and I'm starting to believe that I don't even know what happened there anymore. You know, I I thought that it was more of, okay, we're not getting the, the, the right story. There were other people involved. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if nobody died in Sandy Hook with all the information that I've uh, seen. So uh, I hope to do that show next week. If I still don't feel like I have enough information because I really want to be able to bring that 
to people and have enough information to make a logical decision in, in, in how I present it. And I don't want to come off like I'm just some lunatic saying, oh, yeah, I believe this. No, it's all based off facts and information. Um, so I have that plan for next week. I may do a two-part show um, the day before Thanksgiving and on Thanksgiving Eve. And, of course, you know, the archives are there, so people can always listen to it uh, after if they can't listen to it live. But um, I'm doing a show on that next week. So if you want to listen to it live, uh, I have it scheduled for next Wednesday. But... And probably, like I said, Thanksgiving night as well. Um, but it all depends on where I'm at at that point. Because um, there's still some things. I, I want to make sure I look enough at the other side. I don't want to take, which I started to look at that too. And I can't see anything on the other side that refutes uh, the things that I've seen. But I don't want to get too much into that. Um so anyway, but that's something they do to push the agenda, like Obama did with Sandy Hook, where to get rid of guns. And that's how bad they want to get rid of guns. And somebody brought up this point that it might have been uh, Ken Shorjan who was on last night, that it might have not. But the reason that they want to go after what they call quote unquote assault weapons, which are responsible for a tiny amount of deaths compared to handguns. It's handguns that kill the majority of people, even though it's still a tiny, it's not even 1% of the people that die in a year. It's like probably half a percent if that, um, if you don't count suicides, but because you can conceal it, they're easier to conceal, obviously. So, so many more uh, people are killed with handguns than a, what they call assault weapons. However, assault weapons, which is not even a real thing, but rifles, military style rifles, are going to do you a lot more better or a lot more good. If you ever got into an alterca altercation, not a war with the government, but where you had to defend yourself against the government or against government agents. And that's why they want to go after those. Because it gives them more power. As opposed to, you know, having just handguns. And I, I remember fucking Pierce Morgan who did every show for about two months on guns. But why do I can't do an English accent? Good. But you know, why do you need, you know, a, a 30 round magazine? And, and it, there, a clip is actually like a bunch of bullets string together on a piece of, piece of plastic. It, it, they're not clips, they're magazines. Um, which sucks. Cause there's so many, uh, hip hop songs that they, I don't know any that they actually say magazine. They all say clip. So they don't even know what they're talking about. But it it's a magazine. Anyway, Um, now I totally forgot my point when I was thinking about the whole uh, uh, magazine thing. But it would obviously be um, a lot more... a lot easier to, Oh, sorry. Piers Morgan. That's what I was that. He said, why do you need, you know, a 30 round magazine and an AR 15? And I would told him straight up because the government continues to take away people's rights. And at some point I don't believe in revolution. I don't believe in fighting the government uh, physically because then you just get another government. But that doesn't mean that I don't believe in self-defense and that at some point they'll take away so many freedoms that you'll get in an altercation where you have to defend yourself. So that's what I would tell him. You know, um, that's the main reason 
because even George Washington said that we should have more weapons than the government. And you could say, yeah, it was a different time, whatever. But the whole point of that was if the government took total control like they're doing now, you wouldn't even have to have a battle with them. It would be a bargaining chip that, hey, look, you can't, you know, just like they don't go to war. We talked a little about this last night with other countries with nuclear weapons because they know it's suicide, essentially. So it would be the same thing that things would get negotiated. The government wouldn't just do whatever the fuck they want to do. Like now, they do whatever they want to do because there's no consequences. The people can't do shit. It's an oligarchy, which means the elite rule and the people have no say. And if you doubt that, then show me how you have say. Go fucking get something uh, done and show me that you've done it. Go call your congressman. Change a fucking federal law. Get a federal law changed. Like one that actually means something. Or maybe even one that doesn't mean something. You have no fucking say. Especially on a federal level. But pretty much on a state level as well. But it would be easier to get something, you know, uh, on a state level. But it's not going to be anything that's related to freedom. It might be something, you know, meaningless and stupid that you, uh, you know, somehow if you're friends with an assembly man or something or a state senator and, you know, gave them a bill and they were somehow able to get it passed. But it wouldn't be anything that had to do with you know, freedom or legalization of drugs or like any of those type of things. So my point being that you have no, you can't even talk to your, your congressman in Washington. You'll just talk to their fucking secretary. So point being, you don't have any say. So the only way to change things now, in my opinion, is outside the government. The government, to me, is just meaningless. It's an organization that extorts money from you. It it steals money from you. Look up the definition of extortion. If you own a house, try not paying your property taxes. Try not filing tax returns. Um, and at the same time, it they do whatever they want to do. They pass whatever laws they want to pass, whether it violates the Constitution or not. They violate their own laws, and they're above the law. So, essentially, they're going to keep moving towards that ultimate, you know, they control everything. And that's all governments, in my opinion. And obviously, you know, to say that, well, if we get the right people in and we follow the Constitution, well, that obviously failed. So a piece of paper, even if you write, you know, a new constitution that says essentially the government, all they can do is, you know, arrest people for murder, rape and robbery or, you know, those type of things. It won't matter because that won't last. It's just a piece of paper. Government runs by force. They have no authority. The only reason why they're able to control everything is they have a bunch of men with, with guns. That's it. That's why the people have no say because the people don't have one enough balls, but don't have enough people with the, you know, you look at how armed the police are and I'm not saying go attack the police because I don't believe in that neither. As I was saying, I don't believe in going attacking anybody or, you know, um, I believe in non-compliance and then getting people to see the truth and then slowly dissolving 
the government that way. But just the fact that if people had the same weapons, that would just be a bargaining chip. And I don't even think that would last because the government would figure out some way to get more weapons so they could have the upper hand. And that's why I don't government doesn't work. I believe in an organized society. But if you want to be free, if you want true freedom, you can't have rulers. So I'll, I'm going to take a quick break. Um, then I want to get into the numbers regarding the we started to get into that, but the people that voted and percentages and things like that and then go from there um, getting into Trump and the protests and or riots and all of these things going on and how uh, on the other side you have people that sound like they want to blow fucking Trump people that have spoke out about government and all the bad things they've done and now all of a sudden trump is the savior it's insane um so we'll talk about all those things and more when we get back and of course you know anybody who disagrees with me or if you agree with me or whatever you just want to ask a question or make a comment you can always call in at 702-470-7664 or Skype in username nonpartisan liberty for all. And if you forget those numbers, the easiest way to remember is nonpartisan liberty for all.com. Just go to the contact page and it has all that information there. If you want to send an email or you want to uh, get the number or the Skype username, or you can also go to the chat room. There is a chat room on Spreaker. And you can always go in there and type a question and I might not notice it right away, but I will see it and I can talk about it on the air. So any of those uh, that you'd those forms of communication, if you'd want to use any of those, uh, you can. So we'll be right back after this nonpartisan liberty for all nonpartisan liberty for all dot com. And we are talking about the election the meaningless election regardless of what people think um so we'll be right back after this we did it (laughs) i'm so exhausted i can't even really express how it is that i feel and i mean we we have beat the most organized well-funded criminal enterprise in the history of the world the war is certainly not over but this was one of the biggest battles One of the most difficult. I know that many of you are exhausted. I am absolutely exhausted from covering this from the last few months. We're going to have a nice little celebration here over the next few days. But don't think that the war is over. This country's in big trouble. It's in big trouble financially. It's in big trouble morally. It's in big trouble intellectually. So we have a lot of work to do. If there's any hope of restoring America to its once great glory. Donald Trump will now become the captain of a sinking ship. And it's up to him and it's up to all of us to come together to try to plug the holes and keep this thing floating and finally repair it. The mainstream media in this country has completely lost all credibility, particularly with the millennials. Now, there's an entire generation who will never trust anything that CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, all these major media outlets, the Washington Post, etc., BuzzFeed, ever say again. I want to thank all of you, the viewers, for riding alongside of me in this incredible journey This channel has become a tremendous success over the last few months. 17 million views in October alone. This just shows conservatism is cool. Conservatism is counterculture. Conservatism is correct. And to be clear, it isn't smooth sailing from here. This country is on its last leg. Things are very fragile right now. But this is a tremendous victory against liberalism against the Bilderberg Group, against these criminal, corrupt, special interest groups that are pushing for this new world order. Hillary Clinton is just a figurehead, just a mouthpiece, just a puppet. 
And if you start to go down the rabbit hole, you can begin to see the mechanisms of power that it is that we're fighting. Nobody knows what's going to happen next, and nobody knows how vicious the counterattack by the liberals is going to be. But I know this. We are ready. We are the resistance, and we are rising. This point in Austin, Texas, on beautiful Mount Bunnell, to relay to you the fact that we have major choices to make as Americans, of every race, color, and creed, to decide whether we want to go back to what made this country great, low taxes, low regulations, private property, support of the family, support of sovereignty, or whether we want the siren song of globalism that's nothing but modern corporate slavery worldwide. And on my way here, Donald Trump gave me a call. And I told him, Mr. President-elect, you're too busy, we don't need to talk. But we still spent over five minutes. He said, listen, Alex, I just talked to the kings and queens of the world, world leaders, you name it. But he said, it doesn't matter. I wanted to talk to you to thank your audience, and I'll be on the next few weeks to thank them. I said, is this a private call? He said, no. I want to thank your viewers, thank your listeners for standing up for this republic. We know what you did early on throughout this campaign. Stand up for what's right. It shows he's not the average elitist. These stuck-up nobodies who believe they control the world, who believe everybody's an idiot. Who, who tell you over and over again uh, that, oh, you can't win the primary. Even if you do, we'll take it away from you. We're the new royalty. Or the people that tell you have absolutely no rights or freedoms. This is what they do. They've been wrong on every front. The pollsters were wrong because they were lying. University of Texas Tower, where a large protest is going on, the F. Trump protest. We're not even 24 hours into his president-elect candidacy. And this is their reaction. They attack Trump as a racist, a misogynist, a rapist. But do they actually know the facts? What's your opinion of Trump being elected president? I'm uh, really sad and disappointed. Why is that? Because I think he's a terrible person who doesn't deserve to be the face of the United States. Why is he a terrible person? Well, he's, a, he's been accused of uh, sexually assaulting several women. Uh, he's also racist and quite clearly sexist possibly homophobic okay all right hillary was also uh under nypd investigation according to eric prince of blackwater and she was found to have visited jeffrey epstein's pedophile island six times uh so she is under investigation i don't think several women have specifically come out and said this person sexually assaulted me about hillary clinton right yeah, they have it. It's under investigation. Right. As is Donald okay, I'm Trump. Gonna, I'm gonna, okay, yeah, what about I'm the gonna, racism? What about the racism? Yeah, I mean, how, how do you explain like, the racism? He was endorsed by the KKK. Like, okay, he was yeah, endorsed by the KKK. Person who the KKK All right. like, this is my guy. Do you realize really Hillary racist. Clinton's mentor was Robert Byrd? Is that just a joke? Oh. Is that just a joke to you? Is what a joke? Today, our country has lost a true American original, my friend and mentor, Robert C. Byrd. Senator Byrd was a man of surpassing eloquence and nobility. There are a lot of people who wrote these eulogies for Senator Byrd in the newspapers, and I read a bunch of them, and they mentioned that he once had a fleeting association with a Ku Klux Klan, and what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. He was a country boy from the hills and hollows of West Virginia. He was trying to get elected. And maybe he did something he shouldn't have done, and he spent the rest of his life making it up. I don't understand why you ask if that's a joke. Well, if Trump is a racist, why isn't Hillary Clinton a racist? Is KKK endorsing Hillary? The Klan was her mentor. Why is it so funny? All right, so why did you come up here to the protest? Uh, I was walking to class, and I saw it was when it was smaller here, and then uh, when I Texas! came back... Fight! Texas! Fight! Fight! See, that brings everyone together. Fight! Fight! Obviously, it's, it's a very, very big... Uh, pro Hillary, anti anti Trump rally. Earlier, you mentioned the people with masks. Do you know who those people are? Uh, from what I can tell, they're wearing kefias, which uh, yeah. generally come from the Middle East. There are a lot of Palestinian uh, supporters wear them because that's like one of their. It's actually. Their what if I told you it's the local Communist Party? Oh, I knew. It, I knew okay. it was because right. uh, I mean the the pro Palestinian group here on campus is very very communist. I know I know a few people from classes that are in, involved with it. I think we can come together now. Donald Trump said, "Make America great again." I think we can do that, and this is this is going to take involve everyone across the entire political spectrum—left, right, communist, uh, 
conservative. Everyone is going to have to work together to make this country great again. In fact, the majority of them actually believe they're going to be immediately deported. Trump, he's got to go. Hey, hey. Uh -huh. Why does Trump have to go? Because he does not represent this country. He, his racist, xenophobic, and completely utter... Where are you from, my friend? I am from Houston. Okay, where are you from? Great. I am Beautiful. a Muslim American. You're an American. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. I am a Muslim American. Right. I do not deserve How to be thrown out of this country. What, what about... What, well, of course you don't. Exactly. Of course you don't. Uh, freedom of religion. Yes, sir. Um, I do not believe Trump respects that. He right, believes okay. all of my kind are terrorists, are radical Islamists, when very few of us are. What's the first thing that comes to mind? He's going to deport illegal immigrants who will help this country and white supremacy. If a local communist party that I spoke to here in Austin wouldn't speak back because they don't believe in free speech and frankly they're cowards. This entire march was a march of cowardice. As Obama, your leader, has explained to you, you must accept this peaceful transfer of power and accept the resurrection of the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights of which this country was founded on. John Bound for Infowars.com. Trump reacting to the horrific attacks in Orlando by doubling down on his proposed temporary ban on Muslims entering the U.S. Trump said in a statement this, we will have no way to screen them, pay for them, or prevent the second generation from radicalizing. Is the presumptive nominee going too far and should Muslim Americans be concerned? Well, our next guest, he doesn't think so. Tom Harb is a Muslim American himself, as well as a terrorism expert and co-chair of the American Middle East Coalition for Trump. Good morning, sir. Thank you for, for being with us. We appreciate it. Good morning. How are you? Just for the record, I'm from the Middle East, American from the Middle East background. So, Donald Trump doubling down on his Muslim ban. You have a, a number of Americans saying this is going too far. This might actually only complicate matters going forward. You stand by him. You say this is what needs to happen. Why? Because we as an American, we need our safety first. And our safety, our government must do whatever necessary to protect us. Anybody who's coming from overseas, especially from the Middle East today, and terrorists might slip through, we need to vet them out, we need to know who they are, because even the Middle Eastern countries between Saudi Arabia, uh, the Gulf states, Lebanon, Jordan, they are vetting people coming into their country from uh, Syria or Iraq. Why can't we vet them coming over here to the United States? And that's why we support uh, nominee uh, Mr. Trump, because he's going to take a severe action to protect us. And as a person from Orlando, we don't want to see another situation like what happened, the massacres happened here yesterday to happen elsewhere in our states. So you agree with his idea to build a wall? Of course. Again, you have a lot of refugees, you have a lot of immigrants come illegally uh, to the border with them on Mexico, and no, uh, no patrol could catch them all. Therefore, we need to build a wall, and we need to let the people come legally into the wall, like the big door he's going to build and so on, so we could protect our citizens over here. Hmm. Obviously, we're in the middle of a race for the White House very different perspectives on how you respond to an act of terrorism as we saw yesterday how do you think it would be different under a trump administration you stand by him you support donald trump what would he do differently than what we're seeing play out with the obama administration how should we be thinking about that if you were president yeah well what i believe that uh, mr president obama for the last seven eight years and especially for the last four or five years he did not go after ISIS the way he should have. Him and, and Mrs. Clinton, they want to contain ISIS. And the containment of ISIS is going to keep spreading and committing atrocities and crimes and terrorism throughout the world, like what we saw in Europe and what we have been seeing here in the United States. So, uh, and, and also, furthermore, uh, President Obama 
uh, back in, nine, in 2013, he took out any references toward Islamic terrorism from the FBI training books. And therefore, that's what happened uh, when the FBI were after uh, this terrorist guy uh, who committed the atrocities here in Orlando. The FBI closed the case because they, they couldn't use Islamic terrorism any longer by the FBI manuals. They closed the, door, the books in mm -hmm. 2013, 2014, after the ban by President Obama. Yeah, he also so we hope, had a, yeah, we he, hope now. He also had apparently been connected to the first American who was a suicide bomber in Syria. I do want to ask you, though, about people who are calling this a hate crime. We've heard that from President Obama. We've heard that from other politicians, a lot of people, and also from this group known as CARE. Explain to us what that group is and what they've said. I believe CARE, they want to divert the real attention from Islamic terrorism to hate crime. They want to confuse the public and our intelligence services such as the FBI, the law enforcement. And that's the problem by itself. CARE is promoting to be the hate crime, so our intelligence services, they do not dig deeper into terrorism activities committed by Islamic terrorists from the Middle East and elsewhere throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Tom Harp, thanks for being with us this morning and for your insight. We appreciate it. Everything's set for tonight, Mr. Trump. I wonder what Trump's game is this time. Trump's got a new game. Hey, Trump's got a new deal. What's your game, Donald? Heard about Trump's new deal? What? what? Trump has a new game. What is it? It's Trump. Mr. 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 Trump. Mr.
This year, Donald declared his candidacy for the Republican presidential nomination in a long-winded, completely off-the-cuff speech that was widely mocked by the American media. Okay, so probably like most people that are going to see, well, maybe not, because given the result, maybe I really am different. Two butchers on a farm, come on, let's milk the cow. In a year, that in her lifetime, she deserves to be the first female president. And that's what makes me so sad. Campaign, followed him for months. I saw him like nine times. I met him. And then the Democratic Convention came, and he lost. And that was a battle within itself, but from that moment, I knew that I had to support Hillary Clinton because I knew what was that hasn't really hit yet that Trump is going to be the president for the next four years and I'm so fucking scared even if you don't like her she's qualified and we end up with Donald Trump are you I was very hopeful um, cautiously optimistic but I I mean, we wouldn't have come here if we didn't think she was going to win. I know! I'm, like, I don't know what else She just, she is a monster. And then you have this outcome, and you have people putting children to bed tonight. I, I, this was a rebellion against the elites. True, it was a complete reinvention of, of, of politics and polls, it's true. But it was also something else. We've talked about race. I mean, we've talked about everything but race tonight. We've talked about income. We've talked about class. We've talked about region. We haven't talked about race. This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. I have no respect for women who voted for Trump. Okay, yeah, me too. I think so poorly of them, and the reason why is because, look, I don't think that you're a single issue voter. I just think you're dumb. Okay, I yeah. think you're fucking dumb. <laughs> West Side. <laughs> the world is mine, nigga. Get back. Don't fuck with my stack. The gauge is whack. About to drop the bomb. I'm the mother. Nonpartisan liberty for all, and we are back. Um, a lot of clips there, a lot to talk about for both sides, which I think both of them are fucking ridiculous. And that's where, as I said, I come to the conclusion that nothing's gonna change. Um, Things are going to go on. Our freedoms are going to continue to fade away. The government's going to continue to take more control. And the next president will do the same shit. You know, yeah, Trump's a fucking clown. He's arrogant. He's... It's 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 almost like a joke to me the way I see it, but I wouldn't vote for Clinton either. Well, I wouldn't vote for anybody, to be honest, uh, as I have talked about earlier. But Clinton is just as bad to me. There's no difference because in what's going to happen, there's no difference, regardless of what anybody says. You look at what Obama said. how transparent that's one of the things that he had talked about i want to i want to have the most uh transparent uh administration ever and we're going to be uh it was the least transparent ever uh just and that's just an example politicians are politicians just because trump has never run for anything before doesn't mean anything and looking um, 
at the actual, I, I had said earlier that Obama in one of his speeches, he said 43% of eligible voters voted. I don't know if he was talking about registered voters. I believe he was because when I did my math before I came out to like 30% and I took more out than, um, well, maybe that's why, but if you look at the total population, because Basically, anybody over, fuck, especially kids, uh, but anybody over, um, because look what's going on with, you know, government schools and policing them and whatever, um, teenagers that don't get a say, but anybody over like five, it, it affects, I mean, newborn babies, they don't know what's going on, but, you know, one, two year olds, but so if you take the total population and take the 60 million that voted for Trump cuz about 60 million voted for you know each of them. So if you actually take that which I I will in a minute. Um I think it came out to like 30% or 25, but let me just do it again. Um, let's see. I'm trying to do this quick. Oh, I didn't do it right. Uh, <laughs> okay. So... It's like 18, it's 19%. So you could say that 19% of the people in the country voted for this person, even though of those 120 million people, not all of them can vote. Some of them were under 18. Some of them are felons. I think that's ridiculous because you're, you've been convicted of a felony that you can't vote. Um, I think it depends on the state. But any say of the people have spoken, this is who America picked, whatever, any of that bullshit is just what it is, bullshit. 18% of the people in the country actually voted for you. <laughs> that, that ain't shit. And even if we go by Obama's stat, and I think he was talking about registered voters, but say he was talking about eligible uh, voters, that would mean that that's the amount that voted, right? So um, that would mean 120 million is 43%. And because the votes were about the same, take half of that. Right, which would be, if I'm calculating this correctly, 21% of eligible voters voted for, oh no, they said 43 didn't vote, so I'm sorry, that's why it was so close to the other number. So it'd be half half of 57%. So it would be about 26% of the people that voted or the eligible... Sorry, 26% of eligible voters voted for the person that won, also voted for the person that didn't win. So either way, even if uh, Clinton won, same thing. Just like when Obama won, and this is where uh, we get into a lot of hypocritical shit with these these protests. Um, because it's really ridiculous in my opinion especially when there's so many other things going on and they have no real agenda except to promote their socialism because even on uh whatever news channel it was it might have been cnn 
they were interviewing a guy on the phone and he said, I'm from socialist, whatever. Uh, a lot of these groups are socialist fronts like black lives matter is a, is a communist and socialist front. It's a fact. And if anybody wants that information, I mean, you could, you could actually see it on the signs. You could see the websites. Now you couldn't tell they were socialist websites unless you went to them. But what happened was you have these millionaires and billionaires that hijack these movements and not everybody that was involved in it uh, was involved in that in it for that purpose. And I support anybody who protests the fucking police. I don't think they should exist. But and I mean, they murder like 14, at least 1400 people per year. They're fucking pieces of shit and they shouldn't exist. They're all criminals because anybody who kidnaps somebody off the street for uh, possessing something they're going to put in their body, that's kidnapping because you have the right to possess what whatever you want. That's a natural right and put whatever you want in your body. I don't give a fuck that the government says it's illegal. You arrest somebody for that. You're kidnapping them. You're a fucking criminal. So all cops are criminals. Um, not to mention all the research I've done and experiences I had. So I was fine with that. My issue was a lot of uh, Black Lives Matter took the focus off of the police and the problem with the police and everybody just started talking about racism and it's like police got into the background and it's like, wait a minute, what what about the police? Uh, we need to ultimately uh, get rid of them. Because we're better off without them and have uh, private. And just to make a point here, there's a difference between private and outsourcing. People talk about private prisons. They're not private prisons. They're outsourced prisons. Because if it's paid for with tax money, it's outsourced. If it's paid for with your own money and you choose to pay them, that's private. So private security... uh, Based on the model of the Detroit Threat Management Center is what should replace police, but I don't want to get into a big thing about that. But the reason why I think the protests were ridiculous, and I'm sure a lot of them were socialist and communist groups, they may or may not have been paid and funded. And don't get me wrong, um, you know, I'm not a fan of Trump at all, So, and I've made that clear. But they had no point. And that's why I think, you know, they just to advertise their socialism. And their whole thing was they're hypocrites because they're going around saying it's not my president. Now, I would say Trump is not my president neither, but neither is Clinton if she would have got elected. Neither is Obama. This is not my government. I have nothing to do with this government. I don't consent to this government. I don't believe in any authority of this government, but I'm consistent. It doesn't matter who gets elected. Now, if Clinton or Bernie Sanders, more importantly, would have got elected, they would have been fine. They would have told other people, hey, that was the, you know, even if it was the same thing where he he won in the electoral college, they would have said, well, that's how it is. That's what they do with Obama. And that's what they uh, did probably with the first Clinton. I don't remember, to be honest. I was in, I was younger. But it's ridiculous to have uh, these protests that a lot of them are even leading to riots. The fucking guy hasn't even took office yet. And they're protesting what? Like, they don't even have a point to their protest. They just, well, he's racist, and he's this, and he's that. Now, I'm not saying I disagree uh, that he said a lot of fucked up things that be, can, can be construed that way, and maybe he is, you know, racist. I mean, towards Mexicans, uh, I'd say, based off what he said, it definitely comes off that way. Muslims, um, it sort of comes off that way. He hasn't said anything about black people. The the, the issue that 
uh, people have is they say, well, the Ku Klux Klan supported him and he didn't say enough to denounce them. And, you know, as much as I fucking dislike Trump, I don't know that I can fault him for people supporting him. And, you know, it, it, it's not like he welcomed their support and went and had rallies with them or something. So with that, you know, that's kind of pushing it, I, I think. But I mean, I understand how people can come to that conclusion. Definitely. But to protest. Now, if he did something once he gets elected and you want to protest an executive order or a law or something like that, or I mean, people were saying he should be impeached. Um, as I said, they said he's not my president, but they're hypocrites because it's because it's him, you know, either. And these are people that want more government. They're socialists and communists, most of them. And they're out there saying that, oh, he's not my president. So if it's somebody you like, they're your president. If it's somebody you don't like, they're not your president. You know, so for me, yeah, I don't give a fuck who the president is. It's not, it's not my president. I was just born into this fucking country. I'd fucking leave if I had a place to go that wasn't already occupied by a fucking uh, ruling class. I've thought about leaving. I don't know where the fuck to go. The whole world's been taken over. So, you know, some of these protests have even led to riots. It's just, hey, if that's what you want to do, that's your right to do it. But at the same time, it's my right to criticize it and say that you're ridiculous. Because really, nothing's going to change. And, and and people are thinking like, well, if Hillary was in there, then things would go great. Things are still going to go towards a socialist fucking direction, actually. So to even um, start protesting before he gets in there, and we'll talk about how he's even starting to roll back on some of the shit that he was saying. But it's, it's somewhat uh, ridiculous. So, um, you know, I believe that at least some of the people were paid off. You also have not paid off, but were, you know, paid to protest And that. That's with every, that's not just socialist fucking organizations. That's conservative and, um, whatever other words there are for conservatives or Republicans, whatever, um, as well, that they, they do this shit where anytime something gets that big, it's usually because there's political operatives involved on both sides. So again, if that's something you want, want to do, I guess I understand if you're getting paid, um, but for the people that actually wanted to be out there, it's just, it's pointless and stupid in my opinion. Um, I don't know how you have the time. I guess I understand students, maybe they're skipping class. A lot of them were at um, campuses like Univers uh, University of Texas, Austin, and I think UCLA, but getting to a point where you're rioting when he hasn't even taken office yet and again, he's going to do the same shit that Hillary would have done, trust me, and move in that socialist direction. So most of, most of those groups uh, won't have much of a problem with him. And now this is just my opinion. Now, there might be other things that he'll do that don't fit into the, the agenda of the powers that be that people might not like. And... Those are things, hey, if you want to go out and protest. I think personally protesting, unless you get a lot of attention of the media, and you're only going to get it if they want you to, if it's because, the, and I mean that in 
that the government wants you to because the media is totally fucking controlled by the government. That's why I call it the government media. But it's it's just pointless in 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 my opinion. I guess again, if you're getting paid for it, then whatever. But um, somebody said that he should be impeached, <laughs> and they're like, it's just. It's kind of funny. I mean, and then you have um, two of them. They took them down, and I played one. They had, you know, people are crying and, like, why? Are, first of all, why are you even fucking um, videotape? Well, videotape, that's, like, old. But uh, recording yourself and posting it to YouTube because you're crying about Trump winning. And, see, I don't care either way because, again... I realize that it doesn't matter. The people don't matter. It's the institution. And it's just, it's ridiculous. But they, and not only that is the hypocrisy, because hypocrisy is something that I can't stand. And they're, they're, they're total hypocrites, at least the ones that were in it because they believe in it. You know, the ones that were getting paid, hey, make some extra money, I guess. But and then people rioting. I mean, really, you also have people that were protesting here in Las Vegas that are too fucking stupid to know that um, the Trump Tower here in Las Vegas, um, most of Trump Tower, Trump doesn't even fucking own. I think they just license. I, I don't know if he owns any of it anymore. They license the name. He gets a fucking fee. So it's not even I mean, I know the company that does own it and they had bought and bought it before Trump even uh, announced he was going to run for president. So maybe they wouldn't have bought it had, uh, you know, I, I don't know what their opinion is on it, but maybe they wouldn't have bought, bought it, but they, you know, they needed room. So they bought the rooms there. It didn't make a big deal at the time. It wasn't a big deal, but, you're kind of affecting them and they didn't do anything. But anyway, at the same time, you have Trump now coming out and kind of backpedaling. So, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention that I I mentioned briefly earlier is they're calling the protesters anarchists. Okay. They are not anarchists. They are fucking communists and socialists. They even said it themselves. An anarchist is not just total chaos. That's not what it means. It means no ruling class or no rulers. And typical anarchists, I'm not I'm not talking about the uh socialist anarchist or the that still don't believe in government, but um if you want to call them anarcho capitalist or voluntarist or whatever that don't believe in government. They don't believe in total chaos. They believe in the non-aggression principle, which is basically what I've been saying about, you know, you should be able to do whatever you want as long as you don't hurt anybody else without a government ruling over you, without having rulers, not violence, not actually they believe in quite the opposite. A lot of them are very, uh, peaceful um i would call them there's a word for it actually i can't think of it right now but um what do they call them people like gandhi like peace something i know non-violent but um i don't know whatever like people that would fucking not even hit you back if you hit them type of people I, i don't know that which is stupid but anyway uh a lot of anarchists are especially the ones that are more left leftist but even the ones that aren't um some of them uh, believe in that as well the other thing that i had played was alex jones and uh this fucking mark dice who annoys the shit out of me he's like a religious freak um and Alex Jones 
is a guy who has said so much about government, how fucked up government is, and government did this and that, and they're going to take over, and they, you know they're going to kill people, they're going to reduce population, you know all this shit. And but now all of a sudden, fucking Trump is the savior. And you know I played one clip, but if you listen to Alex Jones say any of this stuff and i i used to listen to him i don't actually listen to him anymore um but i i went and looked or listened to the uh youtube videos because of divided up in the clips about him talking about trump and how you know he's they're saying that he stopped world war three and him and stefan molyneux and those don't who don't know who stefan molyneux is He's a self-proclaimed anarchist, which he's not. He's a conservative. He has, you know, the last, like, fucking 10 shows the guy has done. And he does some, he he calls himself a philosopher. He's an amateur philosopher, but he does some entertaining stuff. Um, some of the stuff that he does is positive, and I do like. But some of the stuff I can't fucking stand like that. And what he uh, has done is over and over again how great Trump is and Trump this and Trump that. And this is a guy who calls himself a fucking anarchist. And, you know, they should all get together and fucking blow him. And it's not just these uh, media pundits. You have other... uh, First of all, you have other ones like this douchebag Wayne Allen Root who calls himself war because of his initials. Yeah. Um, who I've actually met in person. The guy's an arrogant. He reminds me of Trump. He's an arrogant fucking douchebag. Anyway, he's on the... Most people probably don't know him. He somehow... Well, it's easy. That's why. He ran for president on the libertarian ticket because, of course... He couldn't get on the Republican ticket because he's a conservative who likes to uh, his intro to his his new show is uh, the conservative libertarian something. They they don't go together. The real definition of a I mean, the whole libertarian definition has been bastardized because conservatives and libertarians are totally different. Um, And and conservatives and republicans have turned off people to libertarianism and freedom that would normally if they knew what it was really about like the stuff i talk about and how i think um i'm not saying to the extent that i go but at least how i define those things and a lot of other people do the people that believe in true freedom and liberty uh, would probably believe in a lot of that stuff. Maybe not to the point that I go, but it, they get turned off because of these conservatives calling themselves fucking libertarians. So they think it's the same shit. It's rep- and, and the socialists and the progressives help to do that because they want the same thing just republicans and democrats um so they don't want any competition so they do the same thing and they call libertarians republican like which real true libertarians are not republican like that's why i don't use any definitions i don't call myself an anarchist or anarcho capitalist i don't call myself a libertarian i just tell you what i believe And that's what the purpose of the show intro is. I mean, to introduce the show, but, you know, mine's probably a little longer than most shows where I have, you know, maybe a half a paragraph um, or maybe a a whole paragraph, I guess, when I introduce the show. Because I want people to know what, you know, a summary of what I believe in instead of using one of these words that can just be interpreted uh, totally wrong. So you have all these conservatives that are blowing Trump and saying how great he is. I know you have a lot of conservatives that were against him, like Glenn Beck and uh, 
you know, Ted Cruz, I guess, who also ran for president. But you have a whole bunch of people at the same time that are like in love with Trump, whether it's because now there's different types of people. I don't get it. I don't. I've never liked Trump. He used to come on Howard Stern when I was a listener. I could never stand him because he's just an arrogant fuck who brags about himself all the time. And really, that shows that you're insecure. I mean, if you're always bragging about yourself and telling people how great you are. And I just, I could never stand him. I didn't know why I had him on the show. He was just fucking annoying. And then... I happened to listen to the town halls, all the the debates, even the Republican debates, just because, uh, as I've talked about, you know, I'm able to listen to basically, I would say listen to the radio, but instead I, you know, put, put on a debate and listen to it while I'm working. I have that type of job. So... I wanted to know for the purposes of my show, especially when um, I was going to do a show on Trump and and how I can't stand him, which I did do. Uh, you know, I wanted to see what his platform was and what he was going to say and all of this shit. He's he's never said anything that's pro freedom. Although you have these guys like Stefan Molyneux and Alex Jones saying that. You know, oh, he's for freedom. And that's what I mean. These guys, then they don't know what freedom is. He wants a bigger military. He's talking about how the military, uh, you know, Obama decreased the military. And I don't know how much by what percentage, but I'm sure barely by anything. And that's the biggest expense there is, is the military when you look at the budget. And I don't even believe that there should be a military, first of all. But there's like thousands of bases around the world. And this guy wants a bigger military. He totally supports the police. He mentioned that people don't have enough respect for police and this and that. Rudy Rudy Giuliani is part of his team who might possibly be Secretary of State, who's a total authoritarian. Um you know, all of these things. And that's really what Trump is. Trump is like a dictator type. He's an authoritarian, at least in how he was acting. Now, what he did, and you can tell in in his speech after the after he won the election, is he totally kind of changed his tone and and he was more open and nicer and all this shit. And then in his interview on 60 Minutes, he starts talking about, well, on the deportations, we're going to go after the criminals and then we'll figure it out. And on the wall, yeah, we're still going to build a wall, but we could have some fence too. He taught one of the things he did talk about is being a businessman and negotiating. And that's what he is. You know, he's a businessman that is going to sit and negotiate. And he's going to be the puppet of the powers that be the same way. And he's going to call it, well, I negotiated with them. And I negotiated with, you know, I made, I make deals. I made a deal. And, and that's the other thing that he had said, along with all the policy stuff, which who knows how much of it was to attract voters, because we know on the religion shit was proof. Um, What he did was, and I don't know how many people heard this, but he tried to get the evangelicals, and he started talking about uh, being, I think, Christian and you know, the Bible and all this shit. And you could tell it was total bullshit. I mean, he did a really bad job of of trying to come off as a religious person. And he was just trying to get their vote. So who knows what 
he really stands for. He used to be a Democrat. But like I said, that's why with all of these things is that I believe the powers that be thought the best option would be to go with Trump because one, you have division, you have the people protesting, you have all that. That's good. Anything that helps government or something that prompts a government reaction, like the police have to respond and shit like that. And then you have the controversy part, but they know that they can negotiate with him and that he's going to do what they want him to do. Plus, you know, I do believe he is an authoritarian based on just his prior actions before he even ran for president, his wanting to sue people. Um, He made a statement about freedom of speech, like uh, who gives a fuck about that? You know, his wanting to go after people that say things about him in the news. He threatened to sue Bill Maher because he said that he was related to chimpanzees or uh, monkeys or something uh, because of his hair. I mean, all of these things show the type of person that he is. So he'll be able to get the job done that the powers that be want him to get done. And Glenn, Glenn Greenwald wrote, wrote an article um, regarding Obama and how many, not how many executive orders, but the type of executive orders. He wrote a lot of executive orders that were just straight up laws. And that's not what they're for. Really, I believe they're just totally unconstitutional, but they're supposed to be more administrative. From what I read about executive orders was an existing law and they're kind of admitted um, administrating the law that's already been passed or things like that, not just creating your own laws. And that's what they're trying to do. And of course, the Republicans aren't going to stop them. They're all on the same side. They all have the same goal, more control. You know, they just want to control you in different ways. It's like the fascists and the communists. And essentially, he's opened that up. And maybe Trump will open it up a little more. And then the next guy will have even more power till it gets to a dictator. I mean, who knows? As far as how these things are going to happen, how they're going to ultimately get their control, you know, whether it's going to be a declared national emergency. And that's the first thing that came to mind with all the protests that Obama, well, what if he's going to stay in office and and uh, declare a national emergency? And I don't think that now. But maybe that will happen with Trump. And or maybe it will happen with the next president. They have all these laws, most of them executive orders, where they can pretty much, by law, not that it means anything, because they're going to do whatever they want, but by law, there's so much that they can do to just take over martial law, whatever, detain people indefinitely, all of these things. You don't have any freedom. You just have an illusion of freedom. And Trump becoming president is not going to change that for the good or for the the worse. It's, it's going to be the same thing whether him or Hillary was president for the most part is you're going to continue to lose more of your freedoms. And they're going to continue down that generational line that I talked about where you know it's like climbing the fucking stairs they're keep they're going to keep going and going and they're getting close to the end of the line they're definitely more than 50% there now will they get there in my lifetime i i think it's more around the corner cuz i think it's getting closer and closer and i think obama's presidency they, they between Bush and Obama, they made a huge leap. And it wasn't because of Bush or Obama. 
it has nothing to do with them. It's just they. It could have been fucking uh, Gore and and uh, McCain or Gore and Romney or Kerry and fucking uh, whoever fucking um, Kerry and Obama, whatever. Um, so or Kerry and McCain, whatever combination, it it doesn't matter. And that's the point. So what it where where does that leave us? Now I was thinking about this today of writing a dec declarative I can never say the word declaration of independence part two and writing basically what they did is saying we don't recognize your authority, we refuse to obey your laws. We're not your fucking slaves where you can extort us. Think about that for a minute. They take, at least my money, they take about 25% of my money without my consent. It's extortion because if I don't file tax returns, I will go to jail or they will try to take me to jail. So... Not that this would even do anything, but I know now they have the online petitions. I was thinking of writing something like that and seeing how many, how many signatures I could get. Now that won't really do much, but it will put the ideas out there because as I've talked about and people go to this page, I even created a page for it and I got like. 13 likes and i mean i have so many more on my other pages it's like i get views all the time but people are scared to like it it's very strange um it's not strange because i think people are scared and if people are don't like it because they're scared that even shows more how they're scared that the government's watching them and paying attention to what they do and they don't want to be part of a page like that. And I it's understandable. I understand that. But when it comes down to it, there is no changing things via the system. It's not going to happen. It's way it's too late for that. I think it was too late after they installed the Constitution, or at least, you know, maybe a couple years after. Um, But I wasn't around back then, and I don't know enough about it to say. But there's no doubt it's been too late for about 100 years. In 1914, and I always mention this, was the first law they passed where the government And I think that this is like a a milestone, really, in a negative way, where the government told people what they could and could not put in their body. Before that, all drugs were legal. Um, Not only were they legal, but the government didn't get involved in them. And that's the thing with cannabis that bothers the shit out of me. And like I said, here in Nevada, it's legal as of January they don't have like a system for it yet. I guess they're going to give out, you know, you got to get us all these permits and all this shit to buy a store. But uh, I mean, if you have it, it on you and, and they want to limit how much, like you can't have more than an ounce or something, but they don't, they can't prove where you got it, but the government shouldn't be involved at all. It should be like any other fucking store. I think you should be able to buy fucking painkillers on the shelf or heroin or or fucking cocaine of a drugstore because you used to be able to but that's the first year that they passed that law now right before that a couple things happened i don't know if this is coincidence or not one is the income taxes which the reason for income taxes, even though really that's a whole fraudulent thing where it wasn't meant to be income taxes on your actual income. 
And Larkin Rose did a video on this where he goes through all of the actual laws. It's actually a great video um, that I was listening to earlier. Um, I'll have to post the, the video or the name because I, I forget the name of the video. But he went to jail for not filing his taxes based on these laws. But they passed the amendment to the Constitution regarding income tax, but also the Federal Reserve, all right around that same time. So I don't know that that law, which was actually a law against opiates and heroin, had anything to do with it, but, you know, it's something to think about all around the same time. And the reason for the in income taxes to eventually trick people into thinking they had to pay income taxes and then putting them in jail for it when really it was meant for, I believe it was for foreign, like if you sell something to a foreign co country or something, it wasn't so supposed to be on your actual like job was, wasn't supposed to be taxed. And you see what happened with that is, um, and the, one of the reasons was after they passed, you know, created the Federal Reserve, it was so these fuckers who created the Federal Reserve and owned it and the elite could actually get some of these income taxes, whether it was through the government funneling it to them through buying stuff from their businesses or whatever, they'd have more money to... Uh, do things with and that was i mean i i think it was over from the beginning but i mean that was the beginning of the end i mean once you give the government that much money and you look what they do did uh you look what they have done with it and how much power that money gives them over the people where they're able to give the police all this shit. They'll be able to spend money on whatever. And at the same time, they were able to print it too. So, um, but back then they were still on the gold standard. So for me, there's only one answer and that's non-compliance and that's it. And I said this last night, somehow we got into this conversation. And as I said, I don't believe in a revolution or violence, or overthrowing the government, or anything like that, because you just have another government that would replace it. Not only that, I do value human life, and I don't want to, you know, hurt or kill anybody unless I absolutely have to. On the other side of that, I do believe you have the right to defend yourself against government agents. People have this thing in their head, and this is what Larkin Rose is great at explaining. Um, you should check out some of his videos because he's somebody who I didn't get my ideas from him, but I agree with ba pretty much everything I've listened to of his, but he just says it so much better than I do. And he's able to explain it so much better and uh, really just tell people the truth in a way that they can understand it. And, you know, he says kind of the same thing. He doesn't believe in an armed revolution or anything like that, neither. It's just getting the truth to people. But within that, that there may be altercations where you have to defend yourself but the main thing is the way people think of government because they think of, of it as this entity that has the right to do what they do like if a cop comes to your house and wants to come in or whatever you're going to act totally different than if an if a regular person tries to do the same thing. So there are certain things that cops will do, whether it's legal or not, and you won't do anything about it. But if it was your average person, you know, you tell them to fuck off or 
depending on what they tried to do, you may get in a fight with them or shoot them if, if you know, they try to uh, assault you or your life is in danger or something like that. So the point being is that people automatically look at government differently within their heads. It's like programmed into their heads. It's hard for me to even fathom that at this point because I don't look at them like that at all. The only reason why I comply with anything that has to do with government is because they have a bunch of men with guns because they have no authority. You know, I I wanted to do some research because of this, this guy that Trump hired that they're saying is a white nationalist or an alt part of the alt right or something like that. And I didn't really get into a lot of stuff on him, but I was just looking at white nationalist stuff and alt-right. And there was this one person who was talking about, who was on Stefan Molyneux's show, for those who know him, okay, and is on all the time, who was talking about, like, how basically America is Christian white people's country and all this shit. And I'm thinking, like, really? Well, the West Coast, um, you know, I'm sure there's Native Americans and Mexicans, as a lot of it was part of Mexico, who stayed there after the U.S. took it and are just native to that, you know, land. (laughs) And this fucker is talking about, you know, Christian white people are the... It's just ridiculous. These fucking people... um. And and Mullen was on the borderline of that. If if he's having this guy on and talking about, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong talking about it. Uh, but the way he's reacting to it is like, yeah, you know, like I wouldn't say he agrees with all of it, but it's he's not disagreeing. And then um, you have former anarcho-capitalist uh chris cantwell who's now a white nationalist or whatever and people you know in saying that you know white people i read this as a comment too on on something i watched on on youtube that white people should uh make more white people and each white person should have five children like bullshit like that and it's just like what the fuck man when it comes down to it And this is all ways to divide people. And that's what the government wants as well. They want to divide people. Really, when it comes down to it, I give a fuck about one thing. If people believe in freedom and they don't want to force me at the barrel of a gun like the government does. Because if you support government and you're voting for all these things... Or you're calling your congressperson and saying, I want this or I want that. All these laws are, are are based at the barrel of a gun. So you're essentially using violence to get people to do what you want them to do. So people that do that, yeah, I have a problem with. But the people that believe in true freedom and liberty and don't want to tell me what to do, I don't give a fuck what race or religion or whatever i you don't find a lot of religious people that actually believe in true freedom um you find a lot of religious conservatives basically because it's kind of the same thing if you believe in true freedom and liberty and you reject authority you probably rejected the authority of religion as well uh although what the government wants to do is get people away from religion so they worship the government. They want the government to take the place of the church and of God. But, um, yeah, the, I mean, I don't think there's, a, to be honest, there's not a lot of them, and I don't think, and, and the white nationalists, and they're really like a fucking joke, to be honest. 
<laughs> it, it's it's not funny because it's fucking it's fucked up but it's like to me they're just a fucking joke so but on the on the same side i mean when you got these people who are claiming to be anarchists like Molyneux and having this fucking guy on this Vox Dave Vox or something. I don't even know if that's his real fucking name. And I, I can't believe he, he actually fucking said that, especially since the, you know, they were all deists, the founding fathers for one. So I don't know where you get that. And no, it's not, your I, I understand one thing that he said and this is what i understand of some people and the one thing i understand is kind of what i said is that i understand this with immigration although i don't agree with it because i don't think you need permission from government to go where you want to go but people are scared of because there's a government and people vote and all that shit, even though I don't think it really matters, but they want the support of the people, or at least the illusion of it, that if you have people coming into your country that don't believe in true freedom and liberty, that's where I understand. If you have the majority coming in that believe in socialism or whatever, and it totally changes the country in that sense as far as changing the country in a racial makeup i mean who gives a fuck really and so i just wanted to kind of mention that because i did look in i was kind of trying to look into the the guy trump hired and it, I don't know what to believe on him. I, I listened to a couple things. I didn't hear him say anything. Uh, I've heard people say things about him, but then you don't know because the the opinions I heard are biased, and I don't know. So who knows, um, to be honest with you, as far as, you know, the what his opinions are. And if even if he's there, uh that it really matters um because again i think ultimately things are going to go in the direction they're going to go in that the powers that be want them to go in but uh, i mean uh, as far as he goes i don't know that might be you know more of an appeal to it's like he hires one guy to appeal to these people and another guy to appeal to these people, just like he pulled the fucking, you know, Christian shit, like he pretended to be Christian. So I don't know. But, um, but yeah, that was, it's there. The main thing I guess I'd learn, because, of course, I know that, you know, racism does exist and you, you have these people. I, I don't know that they're the quote unquote alt right, I guess is a code word for white nationalists. They I don't know that they hate anybody. I mean, I'm sure some of them do. But. It's a like. I don't know, they're like delusional. But they're definitely, you know, I think the word racist gets thrown around. I really do. But I would call it being racist. Now, if you're if you're Irish and you're from Ireland and you're proud to be Irish or you're from Italy and you're proud to be Italian, I don't see any issue with that. But just like if you're, oh, well, I'm proud to be white and we got to maintain the white race like why would she even give a fuck about that to be honest you know if you want to pass your genes down fine 
But even if you pass your genes down, you're in and to a mixed fucking kid. What does it matter? I mean, it's just whatever. Um, but what I saw was basically these people are fucking they're clowns like Trump. And I honestly wouldn't worry about them. I think they're a tiny percentage of the population and they're just a fucking joke. So, uh, that's how I kind of see them. But as far as, uh, the Steve Banyan or whatever the fuck his name is, the Breitbart, or I guess he's, he's going to be the former Breitbart, uh, editor or whatever he was, um, over there. Um, I think he ran it. Um, I don't know enough about him to say as far as what his influence is going to be and what he really believes. But, but that's all the time we have for tonight. Uh, as always, I appreciate everybody tuning in and, Oh, today's Thursday. I was going to say we'll be back tomorrow, but we won't because today's Thursday. I remember I took Tuesday off. Um, So we'll be back next Tuesday. Of course, don't forget to tune in on Monday to the Illumination Hour with Ellen Stallone, who does her show every Monday, 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern. And it's a it's a great show. Um definitely makes you think a lot very creative and very entertaining and it's usually about an hour or so uh, opposed to my show where i'm sitting there talking for at least two hours if not more a lot of times i go over it used to be three <laughs> um she does about an hour sometimes she'll go over a little but um but even if she did more, it, it would still be uh, entertaining. She does a great job, and I'm really happy to have her on the network that I'm trying to build up. And, of course, if you'd like to donate, <laughs> you could donate at uh, nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. I laugh because I don't think I've ever gotten any donations. But um, I am trying to build this up. And if anybody's actually interested, anybody that is out there working on shows or wants to work on a show or uh you know always looking for shows or people to work with or you know additional help so all the contact information nonpartisan liberty for all.com thanks again everybody is necessary you need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be comply with the orders of police officer resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime.